I'm Debbie. And I'm Allison. And we're the Polter Gals. Spooky. <laughs> Hi, I'm Allison. And I'm Debbie. And we're the, the Poultry Gals. Gals. Um, Allison is kind of losing her voice. She is sipping sipping on that tea and uh, hey. eating them cough drops. Ow. So um, it's that time of year here up in here. I think it's because of all the rain that's been blowing in, you know? Literally I mean, happened the day after we got all the rain. Yeah, so. And I was like, crap. It's probably allergies. Or you have COVID. It's fine. I mean, I don't have an excuse to not know if it's COVID because I actually have at-home tests Allison. that I have neglected to use. Yeah, but then you gotta, like, skip work for five days and whatever. I think it's fine. <laughs> yeah, so if I pretend it's just allergies, it's great. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry we'll about it. We'll find out how many people we'll go down. <laughs> so if people go down, then, then we know it's me. And then you'll be our polter pal. Exactly. You're you're just gonna die faster than all of us. Exactly. So it's great. <laughs> what did Mike say? Congrats on dying faster yeah. than us. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, well, anyway, uh, today we're gonna be talking about the suicide forest. Yes, because and I don't I don't think either one of us knows how to actually say it. I don't think so either. It's the uh, oh wait, do you have yours connected? You could do the voice thing. I don't. Oh, it's a. O K I G A H A R A. I know in Japanese, like the whole point, you pronounce every every letter, right? Yeah. So, from what I understand, when Jeff Egyohara, Egyoh- Jeff was here, Egyohara. Jeff is from China. Yeah. And so he said that how like Mandarin and then the other Chinese yeah. language works. They have more syllables than the English language. Yeah, and you pronounce every single syllable. Every single one. Which is weird. Which is weird. But, you know, I mean, like, we're from Texas, so, like, we don't pronounce half our syllables. Anyway. No. So, I mean, that's... A, well, how do you think we got y'all and all this <laughs> other stuff? Y'all and draws. <laughs> like... Um, yeah. But, yeah, this is uh, located in Japan at the foot of Mount Fuji. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce Fuji because there's apples. Fuji? I think they're Fuji apples. Do you like Fuji apples? Are they a regular apple? Uh, a regala? A regular? Is it a regular or like a wait, rega- are you saying regular? Like a regular lettuce? Arugula? Yeah. <laughs> no. Aww. So it's um, not a regular apple. I don't think so. Um, it's a Fuji apple. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is actually that place. I, what I was saying before we started was this is a place that that kid Logan Paul went to. And like film the body of that guy hanging from the tree and like put it on youtube and it was like a big scandal i literally wrote like a like five page analysis over like because you know i I was a communications major um so like literally i just wrote about it (coughs) don't die um um but yeah i wrote a paper about this when i was in college and i did basically like an in-depth analysis of how like communication boundaries are being like you know they're like blurring the lines between reality and like you know, the privacy of the man who hung himself in the forest, like, did not, he did not consent for himself to be put on, <coughs> don't die on I'm YouTube. Trying. I'm trying to talk about a serious topic. Um, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, that's why Logan Paul is a terrible human being. Um, and this is a very <coughs> sad place where, um, as the name, but yeah. And so as the name insinuates, insinuates, um, the suicide forest is a forest in which people commit suicide. Seppuku. Say seppuku. Um, oh, I guess not seppuku, because I think seppuku in Japanese is like an honorable suicide, where you like stab yourself on your sword. I don't know what suicide normally is in Japanese. It might be, it might be seppuku. I don't know. I don't think any suicide is honorable. Well, in the Japanese culture, it, it was for, like, warriors and, like, samurais. And so they would commit seppuku if they, like, dishonored their, their vows, basically, um, in which the, the knights would fall on their own sword and basically kill themselves out of dishonor. That's anyway, a so little bit of history, um, Japanese history there. Um, again, I could be butchering it, but that's what I remember. I don't know. You did the history. Um, Allison is going to tell us more history. <laughs> I didn't get any of that history, but hey. have fun. Yikes. So I know that this research looks very different. I uh, 
yeah, I was doing it all morning. So, yep. yay. While I was lady. editing. Yeah. And running recordings. Mm-hmm. Doing my normal people job. Yeah, well, you have a job? Gross. Is this a normal people job? I don't think this is a normal people job, Allison. <laughs> I think Crap. this is just an us job. Crap. Yeah. Well, when I was doing an us job, this is also what I was doing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, like we said, this is also known as Suicide Forest. It is also has a third name as the Sea of Trees. And it is on the northwestern flank of Mount Fuji on the island of Honshu in Japan, thriving 30 square kilometers, which is about 12 square miles Hmm. of hardened lava laid down by the last major eruption at Mount Fuji at about 864 CE. That's cool. Yeah, that's 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 some old rock. Yeah, that's some old rock. Like that gives it even more spookiness. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. So you know what they say about rocks? <laughs> they be rocking it. They be rocking it. <laughs> <laughs> so the western edge of the forest where there are several caves that fill with ice in the winter. That's cool. It is a popular destination for tourists and school trips and part of Alcoa, whatever. Mm-hmm. That forest is very dense and the porous lava rock absorbs sound contributing to the sense of solitude to some visitors of the forest. That's pretty cool. Which, it's crazy. So that's maybe that's what we need up in here in the studio. Yeah, why don't we just put lava on just the ground? a whole bunch of lava. Yeah, you know, soundproofing a studio is one of the hardest things. Dude. You I've, know how many foam panels we have on the wall right now? <laughs> I can't even count. Too Allison many? had to put them all up. I, I had to put so. all of them up in both the control room and the studio. <laughs> I um, mean, Granite Mike put the curtains up, so Aww. I can't take any credit for that. And then our interns did the rest. So. Oh, thanks, interns. Thanks, but, guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, Too many. But yeah, we just need lava rock in the studio yeah. to absorb sound. Well, crap. If I would have known that, that would have been so we much easier. You just got a volcano. Exactly. We just pick one of those bad boys up from the store. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just be like, come on, man. All you got to do is erupt. And just like pet it. Erupt now. Erupt now. I love you. I love you. I love you. Do your job. You're beautiful. (laughs) Anyway. So the forest, of course, has a historical reputation as a home of... The Ure. Ure. Ure? Ure? I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm sorry for anybody that listens to it. Mm -hmm. But it is basically... Ghosts. Um... (laughs) Ghost people. of the Dead in Japanese mythology yeah. is what the, basically the definition is. So if yeah. you speak Japanese and you know what we're talking about, please send a voice recording and we will put it in here. Yeah, there you go. I just watch a lot of anime. I don't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I basically know Japanese. No, I'm kidding. I'm being so chuggy right now. I'm just, I, that's a joke. That was so cringy <laughs> for so me. Cringy. <laughs> I'm like, gross, <laughs> Temmie. No, it's like making fun of those kids that are in class that are like, uh, hi, senpai, I watch anime and I know how to talk to my friends in Japanese. Did you ever have, there were kids like that in our high school. Do you remember? No. I was not a part of that group, but it was adjacent. I didn't even know that we had a group like yeah. that. You know, we had like a gaming club and an anime club. What? Yeah. My brother uh, actually helped start the anime and gaming club. Well, my brother didn't start the gaming club. The gaming club existed. And my brother became president of it whenever he was in high school. Is he older? No, he's two years younger than us. Okay, then no wonder I didn't know. But it was know. still going on when we were there. But it was a nobody club. It's a nobody. Wow. Until, until, your, bro- until your brother came around. <laughs> clearly. I'm going to be like, Daniel, Allison said your club sucked and it was a nobody club. Well, what I'm saying is it was obviously a nobody club well, listen, until he anime, got there. Anime wasn't as cool as it is now. I feel like anime is hip with the kids now, you know? Like it used to not be. But now it is. Hip with what kids? Hip with the kids. I don't know. Animes, the, the kids love the animes. Ask someone who makes the anime goods for the... <laughs> we did a Comic-Con, and uh, it went really well, especially when we did all the anime stuff. Um, also, BK. shout out to H-E-B Cough Drops. Yay, shout out H-E-B. Um, also, you guys kind of suck, but it's good. You, they just did a job a job fair. Did you want to go work at H-E-B again? No, I'm good. Oh, okay, good. Uh, I can tell you right now, if I went back to what we call a normal people job... Yeah, that's a normal people job. I would get fired immediately faster than I would get hired. 
because unfortunately you can't keep your mouth shut yeah they mouth? actually have an hr <laughs> yeah oh they have real hr yeah <laughs> whereas here it, they do not we talk about <laughs> bears not. bears there's a whole story what kind of bears? <laughs> trust me we don't want to go down this rabbit <laughs> hole that's as deep as you want to go okay great um back to the suicide forest <laughs> before we get canceled <laughs> which by the way what we're talking about you will find the bears and the force doing this mm -hmm. Baylor bears. Winky face. Hey, you're not wearing a Baylor shirt today. Purposely wore a work shirt. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Shirt. You're wearing a work shirt. It's cute. <laughs> Anybody watching us on YouTube right now? Look at go compliment Allison's shirt because it's not a Baylor shirt. I know. I'm sorry. I'm anyway. Happy. So <laughs> at least since the ninth so the forest is not has that reputation since at least the nineteen sixties. And has become associated with suicide, eventually becoming known in English by the nickname Suicide Forest. And gaining a reputation as one of the world's most used suicide sites. That's so sad. Because of this, signs of the home, or signs at the head of the trails, urge suicidal visitors to think of their families and contact a suicide prevention association. Mm -hmm. Due to the high level of stress for, faced by the Japanese... Japan is seen as one of the top countries with who suicide rates. That's crazy. According to a report by The Guardian, depression, serious illness, and debt are among the common reasons one seeks to end their life. Back in the feudal era in Japan, committed suicide was seen as an act of honor. Oh, look, I did put it in here. Yeah, you did put it wow. in. Wow. Wow, I gave history that you already knew. Whoops. It's okay. That tells you how... Uh, how well you read. <laughs> How well I was actually re proofreading this while That's I was okay. reading it. Continue. Just reinforce so, what I already knew. <laughs> so samurai warriors would rather commit suicide, known as seppuku. seppuku. Yeah, yeah, seppuku, which is a ritual disembody. Disemboweling. Disemboweling. Oh, that means your guts fall out. Yikes. Gross. Yikes. So that, yeah. rather than Don't falling you. in the hands of their enemy, which is a way to uphold their honor and dignity. Yep. Even during World War II, soldiers who joined the Kamikaze, Kamikaze. Yeah, Kamikaze, the special attack group to sacrifice for the country, was seen as respect and honorable. Yeah. Nowadays, many had chosen to end their life, not for honorable reasons, but mainly because they could not fit into society. So sad. Many who decide to su to commit suicide will choose a place of where it is hidden and not easy to be found to spend the their last moment. And for the Japanese, the suicide forest is one of the most common locations. It is known as the world's second most common location to commit suicide, and it follows right behind the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, California. That's wild. Yeah. So that's crazy to think that across the world like two separate ends of the world and we have the number one and number two that's crazy that's, that's so sad nice. too. yeah what a life well what makes it worse is that local police at some point stopped publishing the number of suicides that took place at this forest oh no as a way to downplay its popularity among those who seek to make it to commit suicide and also a way to encourage more tourism to this amazing forest. So, like, hey guys, um, let's just not talk about how many mer how many yeah. people have suicided themselves here. Yeah. Um, and I feel like we should put should we put a trigger warning on this episode because it's literally called the suicide. Forest. Probably. We'll put a we'll put a we'll put a trigger warning. In we can video. we can record. Yeah. It and then put it in the to <laughs> unalive themselves. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Um. But yeah, that's crazy. And the cops are like, mm, let's just get some more school children up in here. Yeah. So um, I like, mean, I guess they don't go to like the parts where people kill themselves i mean it's still a little weird that you're taking potential school kids and tourists and tourists to a place that is known to basically torment people yeah. of solitude and um is historically said to have ghosts in it yeah which we will definitely get into because that statement makes it even worse what we'll find out in the hauntings it makes it worse mm -hmm. that this is what they're aiming to do that's crazy because of the ghosts and everything, which yeah. is terrifying. So the last data released was back in 2003, 
where there was a confirmed 105 suicides. Wow. It is believed that the number can be as many corpses with many more because many corpses were not found. That's terrifying. Where did they go? I don't know. (laughs) But yeah, so there could be more than 105 just because their bodies were not found. That's terrifying. And then in 2010, police records show that 247 people attempted commit to commit suicide in the for in the forest, but only 54 of them were successful. Mm, that's crazy. And that's just what was reported. Wow, successful. I like that it's in quotation yeah. marks because that's sad. Yeah. Wow. Well, that sounds like it has a full history of just trauma and. It's, you know, and again, the Japanese culture is. Yeah, and it, it's terrifying. And we will get a little, like, mm-hmm. more in depth with some of that history with the hauntings because a lot of these hauntings do, they center a lot of their history and a lot of what they know with this forest in their history. Yeah. Because, like you said, it's just embedded with their culture. Yeah. And, you know, in Japanese mythology, like, mm-hmm. you know, the whole idea of demons and spirits and exactly. ghosts already are based in their culture mm-hmm. um so it's very interesting to see how they balance it, it's yeah it's very hard to talk about the hauntings without talking about while you're talking about the hauntings talking about the history yeah because if you look up a lot of this stuff it gives you two sentences of history talks about it goes yeah. back to talking about why this came to be and then everything else yeah. and i was like dude this is it's insane. Yeah, and that's why it's important for our episodes. We do history first, mm-hmm. and then the hauntings. <laughs> yes, because it's, it's very hard to understand any of the hauntings yeah. if you don't have that history. And I mean, even on, like, ones that are, like, <laughs> obviously we don't know how to pronounce anything. It's still, like, you know, yeah. kind of gives you a little bit of universal experience. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we all kind of go through the same stuff, especially when it comes to mental health. Yes. Um, and and again, on that note, we'll take a commercial break. Commercial break. <laughs> And now, a word from our sponsors. Spooky. (laughs) We're not sponsored by BetterHelp. (laughs) But also, get BetterHelp. Get BetterHelp. It'll help you. I don't have it. I probably should get it. Me too. Should I download it? Do you want to download it? Should we do a free trial? And then we can message them and be like, hey, we tried BetterHelp. Can you sponsor Sponsor our podcast? Sponsor our podcast, please. Thanks. Bye. (laughs) See you later. If you hear this BetterHelp. If you hear this BetterHelp, please. Is there just someone out there just going and like listening to a bunch of podcasts trying to find like which ones BetterHelp should sponsor? I don't think so. I don't think so, but they (laughs) should. And it should definitely be us because it's just about every episode that we talk about (laughs) it. Yeah. Mental health. Who knew mental health and ghosts go hand in hand? It's like. Jeez. <laughs> Ghost hand and regular hand. <laughs> yeah. It's a poultry pal. Okay. Well, um, are you ready? Yeah. And now, a word from our sponsors. Spooky. <laughs> All right. And we're back. Um, and now that we talked about the history, and I hope you guys heard a good commercial, it's time to get into the hauntings. Ooh. Alrighty. Um, so, um, the locals who live near the suicide forest actually said they can easily identify um, the three types of visitors who come to the forest, basically. Um, so, of course, this forest is infamous, and they said there's only three types. Um, they say there are the trekkers. So, like, you know, people come and hike, the people that are, like, outdoorsy, the people who, like, come to the forest for natural beauty and to, like, see it. The curious, which, that's us. Oh. Trust me, I'm not a trekker, but um, I do hike a little. I do dabble in a little bit of hiking. Um, but the curious, that would be us. For sure. Um, those who are interested in the other side and the creepy things in the world. Oh. Um, dark tourists, if you will. Um, and then those that are planning their one-way trip. Um, yikes. I thought you were going to say yikes. Allison, say it. I mean, yes. Yikes. (laughs) I said it for you. (laughs) I was like, she's primed. (laughs) I get so, I feel like I'm used to your little responses now. I'm like, she's going to say it. (laughs) That's why you got to throw you off. I I got to throw you off. Keep me on my toes. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of crazy that, 
um even the people that are local to that area can tell like who's gonna be coming in who's gonna be leaving i mean i guess it's both a good and bad thing that's true like it's not good that they have grown so used to it but maybe they can like i don't know maybe they like or like don't do it (laughs) i don't know Uh, yeah i would say it's good because they can try to stop them but yeah still that's that's sad but yeah um anyway so basically this all started with a mystery novel called Kurei Jakai um I don't know if I pronounced that right it's K-U-R-O-I-J-U-K-A-I so Kurei Jakai is the way I'm gonna pronounce it um this is translated as the Black Sea of Trees um which is pretty interesting because the name um the actual Japanese name for the forest translates to Blue Tree Meadow um mm-hmm. it was pretty cool like the yeah. actual japanese translation um and this book was called the black sea of trees so hmm, something to think about oh um and this book was actually written written by um, um a japanese um author named sicho masumoto again don't know if i pronounced that right um and this was written back in 1960 the novel ends romantically with the lovers committing suicide in the forest yikes who knew who would have thought who would have thought um, but yeah, and which then revitalized the suicide forest popularity of those who are wanting to end their life in the forest. So all because of this book. Which again, sad. Because which is sad. But you know, it's like those femme fatale novels I and mean, like, you know, murder mystery. And it's like, but we love each other, but we can never be. And I just don't understand like the trope. <laughs> it's basically, I'm assuming it's a fictional story. Yeah, probably. That's based off of a real place, which yeah. happens a lot. Yeah. And that's what helped make it back popular. But this was, like, back in the 1960s. So since then, I mean, you know, we even looked at the rates from 2003 and 2010. Yeah. Um, so is it really, that was, you know, like, such yeah. a, a stronghold on, again, the culture and the idea behind yeah. it? Um, but, yeah, and... One could blame the novel for its dramatic end- ending, but the suicide history of the forest actually started long before that. So, like I was saying, like it's had mm-hmm. a longer stronghold on the, the, the culture, culture and the population mm-hmm. long before the book. So, obviously, he chose that location because it was already it's for a location. reason. Yeah, it was yeah. already known. Um, and it started way before, as many people actually hanged themselves in the trees um, because they were so thick and dense mm-hmm. and it was one of the areas where people could easily access um and then they would hang themselves which is sad because of the solitude yeah and it again just, the solitude i'm sure it was just alone. like yeah i'm sure it's just the knowledge of how much solitude that forest does give yeah and like it presents itself as an opportunity to go over and do that yeah, which is sad um but yeah and then in japanese mythology the forest is known to be haunted by demons um as we mentioned earlier so the demons are actually this is a reason why some japanese are actually afraid to enter the forest so just as many as there are tourists and like school children and people going in um some people are actually terrified by its tradition um Mm -hmm. and just knowing that it's haunted by demons um they're like "Mm, we're good thanks thanks but no thanks yeah, and um, it's actually believed that those who enter the forest will never return, um, even if they are going into, um, not going into, commit suicide. Yeah, um, they're saying that they might not return. That's um, terrifying. So that's terrifying. That's um, terrifying. Now this could actually be true, and even nowadays, many trekkers can easily lose their way in this dense for this dense forest. Um, furthermore, due to the magnetic iron in the volcanic soil area nearby, it interferes with the function of compasses and mobile phones so wow. you know how like have you do you watch stranger things and stranger things yeah. when they're using like the compass and like it's like yeah and that's how they find out about hawkins and the the, the gateway and everything yeah yeah <laughs> um, and then at some point they so were using like yeah. turns and like mosquito zappers yeah um so pretty crazy that literally the rocks are so crazy and then again it's just a dangerous like a dangerous area um because you know the forest trees organically twist and turn their roots wind across the forest floor um into treacherous threads where people can just fall or get lost you know like easily um so that's pretty crazy and then because of its location the ground is uneven rocky and perforated with hundreds of caves so it could also be said that some people have just like walked into caves and just been lost that's 
horrifying. So that's terrifying. Yeah. Um, but also, again, the feeling of stillness and the trees are so tightly packed together that you might not even be able to get through some areas. So that is pretty crazy. Um, and then one of the other reasons why people believe that the forest is haunted is due to the Yuri or Yure or however pronounce it. Yeah. Um, the, the demons and the, the spirits that are, have filled that area. Um, and which again is Japanese mythology, mm -hmm. um, like based in their culture, um, where they have souls filled with hatred, sadness, with the desire to revenge. Which is all things you don't want. <laughs> Which is all things you don't want in a ghost. Um, I'm going to say that right here, right now. Like having <laughs> one, one yeah. filled with one of those things, that's bad. Yeah. Um, and according to legend, people would actually bring their family members here during famine to the forest and then would leave them to die there. So like straight up Hansel and Gretel. Like take your children mm -mm. out into the forest and mm -mm. leave them. And then they would have to find their way back um, or die. And again, it was like because they could not. That's they, so, they're an island, you know. So yeah. it was harder for them to get resources. Um, but it's yeah. so bad. Um, and then, according to legend, um, they would leave them and they would die there um, in order to actually save their food for other family members. Um, and those left in the forest would die slowly due to starvation, um, then turning them into these demons, um, based on their drive for revenge and sadness and literally starving to death. Um, which is terrifying. That's, yeah. Um, I don't know how to say it even any more than that. <laughs> but yeah, straight up Hansel and Gretel, their family. Which is nope. sad to think about. Yeah, no. Um, and then in the Japanese popular belief, if a person dies with a, de a deep sense of hatred, anger, or sadness, or with a desire for revenge, their soul then cannot continue on to the next plane. It stays. Um, so like they knew, they knew, you know, like it was part of their, like, if you do this, they're probably going to turn into a demon or a bad spirit. That's, that's just like, what happens. Um, so thus only fueling. Yeah. That's only the, fueling the forest with more spirits. That's um, so bad. Yeah. And then the soul couldn't leave the world. So it would just continue to wander, um, appearing to people affected by the spell or those who would cross its path. Um, so then people would go into the forest and they would witness um, the spirits. That's Jesus. Yeah. You might as well just send them to a mental like institution at that point. Well, I, like, I, again, or, I mean, like, I, I get it. Is. It's health and they didn't have the like the resources, resources that we have now. And if it was during like famine or disease yeah. and your whole population is dying and you have no nothing to do back in the day, they didn't know what to COVID. do. COVID. Well, listen, now we know what it's like. Um, at least we don't have tuberculosis running rampant. <laughs> the white death. The white death. Um, all of the things we've talked about. Um, and, you know, the souls called the Ure, um, they can actually be found in many modern cultural references and movies. Um, so they're, it's pretty, again, well known um, as a cultural touch, touchstone. Um, and then unlike Western horror movies where the ghosts want something specific in order to be able to rest, um, the ghosts want nothing in particular. They just want to have their curse removed or their conflicts resolved so that they can move on. Because, um, again, they died like either starving or with such sadness or death it was like a curse placed on them that's bad yeah um and then the belief in the yuri continues today um and when a body is found in the forest um guardians place it in a room next to the forest before they send it to authorities um oh, so no. legend is that if the body is left alone in the room the yuri um move around screaming in the room um, so hence, forest guards will play rock, paper, scissors to determine who the unlucky companion of the body is. Because they don't want to be next to it. That's sad. Yeah. And then um, while we were on break, I actually looked up um, a story. So CNN actually interviewed someone who went into the forest to commit suicide. Um, so oh, they actually no. found somebody and they talked to him. Um, so CNN previously interviewed one man who attempted to end his life in the forest. Um, basically, he said... My will to live disappeared. Um, Taro is a middle-aged man who did not want to be identified. Um, told CNN back in 2009, I'd lost my identity, so I didn't want to live on this earth. And that's why I went there. 
um, Dylan Mayonette, Catherine Langford, and Netflix's 13 Reasons Why um, obviously talked about, um, you know, mental health a lot. And Taro um, actually bought a one-way ticket to the forest, having been fired from his job at an iron manufacturing company, and he said he had lost his financial stability. And that is one of the reasons That's why he rough. went to the forest. Um, he said, you need money just to survive, which that's an eerie I mean, quote. Yeah. Um, we'll and then once he got to the forest, he cut his wrists, but the wounds were not fatal enough. He then collapsed in a near, and n- nearly died from dehydration, starvation, and frostbite, but was then found by a hiker and um, was saved. Of all the things that could have happened, like... I know. Um, and then over the years, there have been some attempts to curb suicides in the forest and nationally. Um, local authorities have actually posted security cameras at the entrances of the forest and are hoping to track all of those who walk inside. Um, and then according to Emisa Watanabe um, of the government, they're actually trying to um, get in contact with anybody that they have not seen exit the forest. Um, to make sure they're okay. I mean, at least they're doing, like, having some kind of, like, safety protocol. Yeah. To help those that are intending to do that. Uh, yeah. Because, n- like we've mentioned before on the show, there's, that is such a big thing. Yeah. Like, cutting yourself, harming yourself in any way. Mm-hmm. W- even the thought of wanting to die. Yeah. Like, even if you're not physically harming yourself, just sitting there emotionally harming yourself by yeah. saying, I want to die, I want to die, I want to die. You're basically killing yourself mentally and emotionally. Yeah. And that, that's hard, too. Yeah, and that just damages you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you do uh, believe in ghosts in the afterlife, guess what's going to happen? Yeah. Um, that's not good. Um, and, no. you know, I'm not saying all ghosts are <laughs> from, you know, this yeah. type of thing, but... Um, it's just very interesting to see like the history and the, you know, yeah. the what what's behind it, you know, and like how, you know, now we've the whole idea behind ghost stories is that like it's things that were unknown mm-hmm. and it's like the trauma of the past coming into today's world. Um, yeah. So it's very interesting how we can address that now today and talk about it more freely because um, you know if we would have talked about this like twenty years ago, people would be like, "What is this ghost podcast? <laughs> what is a ghost podcast?" Yeah. And it's like, it's funny how things change. Yeah. And I did hear a quote that I know not everyone's going to agree with 100% because I don't always 100% agree with it. But it's basically if you're depressed, you're living in the past. Yeah. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. Hmm. But if you are 100% like in the middle ground you're living in the present Hmm. interesting which obviously like which is why i say i don't always 100 percent agree because there are times that you get anxious and you don't know why yeah you just have an anxiety attack who knew you all of a sudden get sad for no reason yeah so yes that quote can very much be modified in certain situations but a lot of the time yeah that that has a tendency of happening yeah that's crazy um but yeah so that's just some some more about the suicide forest uh, this one was another deep one that we yeah. kind of talked about i feel like some episodes are like ha 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 ghost silly how <laughs> we're being a goofy and then some episodes is like yeah a bunch of people die this is terrible everything's sad we're sad girls now we're sad gals <laughs> welcome to the sad gals your new podcast oh, no. <laughs> uh but anyway if you guys need um help look up your local suicide prevention number and remember um we're here to have a good time yeah um thanks for listening to another episode of the polter gals um and catch you next time you've been listening to the polter gals a rogue media network podcast this has been a rogue media podcast 